Christian influence. The soldiers of the cross are to exert a positive influence for good. Christ says, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Matthew 12, 30. Testimonies or the Church, Volume 8, Page 45. It is our own character and experience that determine our influence upon others. In order to convince others of the power of Christ's grace, we must know its power in our own hearts and lives. Ministry of Healing, page 469. No other influence that can surround the human soul has such power as the influence of an unselfish life. The strongest argument in favor of the gospel is a loving and lovable Christian. Ministry of Healing, page 470. The Discipline of Trial. Many who sincerely consecrate their lives to God's service are surprised and disappointed to find themselves, as never before, confronted by obstacles and beset by trials and perplexities. They pray for Christ-likeness of character, for a fitness for the Lord's work, and they are placed in circumstances that seem to call forth all the evil of their nature. Faults are revealed of which they did not even suspect the existence. Like Israel of old they question. If God is leading us, why do all these things come upon us? Trials and obstacles are the Lord's chosen methods of discipline and His appointed conditions of success. He who reads the hearts of men knows their characters better than they themselves know them. He sees that some have powers and susceptibilities which, rightly directed, might be used in the advancement of His work. In His providence He brings these persons into different positions and varied circumstances that they may discover in their character the defects which have been concealed from their own knowledge. He gives them opportunity to correct these defects and to fit themselves for His service. Often He permits the fires of affliction to assail them that they may be purified. Ministry of Healing, page 470 and 471 Life is made up of little things. One step at a time we are advancing to walk in Christ's footsteps. Life is made up of little things, the repetition of simple acts, and that which we develop in character, in these commonplace things, is deciding our destiny for eternity. The character which we exhibit in our daily practical life testifies in the books of heaven whether we have any other gods before the Lord. Letter, 70, 1893. Do the duty that lies nearest. Let us remember that while the work we have to do may not be our choice, it is to be accepted as God's choice for us. Whether pleasing or unpleasing, we are to do the duty that lies nearest. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Ministry of Healing, page 472 and 473. Make the most of your talents. Every youth should make the most of his talents by improving to the utmost present opportunities. He who will do this, may reach almost any height in moral and intellectual attainments. But he must possess a brave and resolute spirit. He will need to close his ears to the voice of pleasure, he must often refuse the solicitations of young companions. He must stand on guard continually, lest he be diverted from his purpose. Review and Herald, September 13, 1881 singleness of purpose. The true worker for God will do his best, because in so doing he can glorify his master. He will perform every duty as unto God. His one desire will be that Christ may receive homage and perfect service. There is a picture representing a bullock standing between a plow and an altar, with the inscription, ready for either, ready to toil in the furrow or to be offered on the altar of sacrifice. This is the position of the true child of God, willing to go where duty calls, to deny self, to sacrifice for the Redeemer's cause. Ministry of Healing, page 502. God's plans are best. Our plans are not always God's plans. He may see that it is best for us and for His cause to refuse our very best intentions. If he sees it best not to grant their desires he will counterbalance the refusal by giving them tokens of his love and entrusting to them another service. Ministry of Healing, page 473. In the future life the mysteries that here have annoyed and disappointed us will be made plain. 
we shall see that our seemingly unanswered prayers and disappointed hopes have been among our greatest blessings. Ministry of Healing, page 474 A Lesson from Moses' Life The education that Moses had received in Egypt was a help to him in many respects, but the most valuable preparation for his life work was that which he received while employed as a shepherd. As he led his flocks through the wilds of the mountains and into the green pastures of the valleys, he learned faith and meekness, patience, humility, and self-forgetfulness. He learned to care for the weak, to nurse the sick, to seek after the straying, to bear with the unruly, to tend the lambs, and to nurture the old and the feeble. Ministry of Healing, page 474 Plans for the Future Let God plan for you. God never leads his children otherwise than they would choose to be led, if they could see the end from the beginning and discern the glory of the purpose which they are fulfilling as co-workers with him. Ministry of Healing, page 479 God will provide. Worry is blind and cannot discern the future, but Jesus sees the end from the beginning. In every difficulty he has his way prepared to bring relief. Our Heavenly Father has a thousand ways to provide for us of which we know nothing. Ministry of Healing, page 481 If Christ dwells in us, we shall be patient, kind, and forbearing, cheerful amid threats and irritations. Day by day and year by year we shall conquer self, and grow into a noble heroism. This is our allotted task, but it cannot be accomplished without help from Jesus, resolute decision, unwavering purpose continual watchfulness, and unceasing prayer. Each one has a personal battle to fight. Not even God can make our characters noble or our lives useful, unless we become co-workers with Him. Those who decline the struggle lose the strength and joy of victory. Ministry of Healing, page 487 Cultivate the habit of speaking well of others. Dwell upon the good qualities of those with whom you associate, and see as little as possible of their errors and failings. When tempted to complain of what someone has said or done, praise something in that person's life or character. Cultivate thankfulness. Praise God for His wonderful love in giving Christ to die for us. It never pays to think of our grievances. God calls upon us to think of His mercy and His matchless love that we may be inspired with praise. When those who love God are tempted, let them sing the praises of their Creator rather than speak words of accusing or fault-finding. The Lord will bless those who thus try to make peace. Trust in God. Be careful not to give the enemy any advantage by your unguarded words. Keep looking to Jesus. He is your strength. Ministry of Healing, page 185 Earnest workers have no time for dwelling upon the faults of others. We cannot afford to live on the husks of others' faults or failings. Evil speaking is a twofold curse, falling more heavily upon the speaker than upon the hearer. He who scatters the seeds of dissension and strife reaps in his own soul the deadly fruits. The very act of looking for evil in others develops evil in those who look. By dwelling upon the faults of others, we are changed into the same image. But by beholding Jesus, talking of his love and perfection of character, we become changed into his image. By contemplating the lofty ideal he has placed before us, we shall be uplifted into a pure and holy atmosphere, even the presence of God. When we abide here, there goes forth from us a light that irradiates all who are connected with us. Ministry of Healing Page 492 The one running in a race will surely lose his victory if he keeps looking behind him or from side to side to see if his fellows are coming out ahead of him. He must run to win the crown of immortal glory, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of his faith. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. What a grand victory! Beholding, you become a changed man. Consider this. We behold, and catch the bright beams in the face of Jesus Christ. We receive as much as we can bear. Let us not stop to quarrel over circumstances, but keep Christ in view. 
Through the transforming power of the Holy Ghost we become assimilated to the image of the blessed object we behold. Manuscript 26, 1889 Do not ponder over your tried feelings. Put these feelings aside. When you get into the path of criticism and harsh speaking, you grow more and more harsh and more inclined to criticize. Stop before you begin. Do not give the enemy one inch of ground. Letter 169, 1902 So far as you can do so, remove all cause for misapprehension. Avoid the appearance of evil. Do all that lies in your power, without the sacrifice of principle, to conciliate others. And there is wonderful power in silence. Words spoken in reply to one who is angry sometimes serve only to exasperate. But anger met with silence, in a tender, forbearing spirit quickly dies away. Ministry of Healing, pages 485 and 486. Often silence is eloquence. It gives opportunity for thought, and thoughtfulness checks the hasty word. Manuscript 4, 1902. The blow that is aimed at, us, falls upon the Savior, who surrounds, us, with his presence. Whatever comes to, us, comes from Christ. We have, no need to resist evil, for Christ is, our, defense. Nothing can touch, us, except by our Lord's permission, and all things that are permitted work together for good to them that love God. Romans 8, 28. Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 71. We should not allow our feelings to be easily wounded. We are to live, not to guard our feelings or our reputation, but to save souls. As we become interested in the salvation of souls we cease to mind the little differences that so often arise in our association with one another. Whatever others may think of us or do to us, it need not disturb our oneness with Christ, the fellowship of the Spirit. Ministry of Healing, p. 485 We cannot afford to let our spirits chafe over any real or supposed wrong done to ourselves. Self is the enemy we most need to fear. No form of vice has a more baleful effect upon the character than has human passion not under the control of the Holy Spirit. No other victory we can gain will be so precious as the victory gained over self. Ministry of Healing, page 485 Self must be hid in Christ. Self must not be puffed up. Self must not become exalted. We are on test, on trial. Whatever may be our position, whatever our influence, it will be augmented fiftyfold if we act the principles of truth in our daily life. We are forming characters that we are to take with us in the future life, and we cannot be careless and excuse defection of character in ourselves. Do the best we can, and we often give offense, and cause pain and misapprehension, but if we keep an eye single to the glory of God, we shall have tact and wisdom. Letter 92, 1893 we can receive of heaven's light only as we are willing to be emptied of self. We cannot discern the character of God, or accept Christ by faith, unless we consent to the bringing into captivity of every thought to the obedience of Christ. To all who do this the Holy Spirit is given without measure. In Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and in him ye are made full. Colossians 2, 9-10, Revised Version Desire of Ages, page 181. We need a constant sense of the ennobling power of pure thoughts. The only security for any soul is right thinking. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. The power of self-restraint strengthens by exercise. That which at first seems difficult, by constant repetition grows easy, until right thoughts and actions become habitual. If we will we may turn away from all that is cheap and inferior, and rise to a high standard, we may be respected by men and beloved of God. Ministry of Healing, page 491 God alone can give us the victory. He desires us to have the mastery over ourselves, our own will and ways. But He cannot work in us without our consent and cooperation. The Divine Spirit works through the faculties and powers given to man. Our energies are required to cooperate with God. The victory is not won without much earnest prayer, 
without the humbling of self at every step. Our will is not to be forced into cooperation with divine agencies, but it must be voluntarily submitted. Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 141. Every resistance of temptation makes resistance more easy. Every denial of self makes self-denial easier. Every victory gained prepares the way for a fresh victory. Each resistance of temptation, each self-denial, each triumph over sin, is a seed sown on to eternal life. Every unselfish action gives new strength to spirituality. No one can try to be like Christ without growing more noble and more true. Messages to Young People, page 96 When you rise in the morning, do you feel your helplessness and your need of strength from God? And do you humbly, heartily make known your wants to your Heavenly Father? If so, angels mark your prayers, and if these prayers have not gone forth out of feigned lips, when you are in danger of unconsciously doing wrong and exerting an influence which will lead others to do wrong, your guardian angel will be by your side, prompting you to a better course, choosing your words for you, and influencing your actions. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 3, pages 363 and 365 We are prone to look to our fellow men for sympathy and uplifting, instead of looking to Jesus. In His mercy and faithfulness God often permits those in whom we place confidence to fail us, in order that we may learn the folly of trusting in man and making flesh our arm. Let us trust fully, humbly, unselfishly in God. He knows the sorrows that we feel to the depths of our being, but which we cannot express. When all things seem dark and unexplainable, remember the words of Christ, What I do thou knowest not now but thou shalt know hereafter. John 13, 7. Ministry of Healing, pages 486 and 487. Be strong in the Lord. Human courage will not suffice. The Christian soldier must be strong in the Lord. The Upward Look, page 129. If you do not feel lighthearted and joyous, do not talk of your feelings. Cast no shadow upon the lives of others. A cold, sunless religion never draws souls to Christ. It drives them away from him into the nets that Satan has spread for the feet of the straying. Instead of thinking of your discouragements, think of the power you can claim in Christ's name. Let your imagination take hold upon things unseen. Let your thoughts be directed to the evidences of the great love of God for you. Faith can endure trial, resist temptation, bear up under disappointment. Jesus lives as our advocate. All is ours that his mediation secures. Ministry of Healing, page 488. If you talk out your feelings, every dot you express not only reacts upon yourself, but it is a seed that will germinate and bear fruit in the life of others. How important that we speak only those things that will give spiritual strength and life, all have trials, griefs hard to bear, temptations hard to resist. Do not tell your troubles to your fellow mortals, but carry everything to God in prayer. Make it a rule never to utter one word of doubt or discouragement. You can do much to brighten the life of others and strengthen their efforts, by words of hope and holy cheer. There is many a brave soul sorely pressed by temptation, almost ready to faint in the conflict with self and with the powers of evil. Do not discourage such a one in his hard struggle. Cheer him with brave hopeful words that shall urge him on his way. Thus the light of Christ may shine from you. None of us liveth to himself. Romans 14, 7. By our unconscious influence others may be encouraged and strengthened, or they may be discouraged, and repelled from Christ and the truth. Steps to Christ Ages. 118, 119, and 120. The continuity of Christian influence is the secret of its power, and this depends on the steadfastness of your manifestation of the character of Christ. Help those who have erred, by telling them of your experiences. Show how, when you made grave mistakes, patience, kindness, and helpfulness on the part of your fellow workers gave you courage and hope. Ministry of Healing, page 494. All who will gather warmth from the coldness of others, 
courage from their defections, and loyalty from their treason, will triumph with the third angel's message. Review and Herald, June 8, 1897